for joining if you are new here and um, this is your first time coming across one of my videos. Welcome. Uh, my channel is Life's Countless Journeys and on this channel I sort of just make videos about my life experiences, um, things that I may be going through and um, in the hopes of maybe someone it can be helpful for and it's helpful for me to talk about them right it's helpful for me to normalize um, some of some of these things because life will take us in so many different ways um, through so many hills and through so many value valleys today's video I'm going to is a heavy one right I'm going to talk about um, sorrow and loss. Um, so this is my journey through um, through loss and sorrow. If you're interested, keep watching. started um, and who would have thought that um, that it would have been what it is you know that all the people that have been lost that it would have who would have even fathomed when we first heard of COVID when it first came on the scene that it would have even gone close to you it has but it did so um, what you have now is a lot of people dealing with loss and not some people dealing with one loss of one loved one or friend or family member um, but dealing with multiple and that's where this video comes in I mean I've dealt with loss in my life um, lost my father um, 16 years ago, this October, um, my ex-husband passed away seven years ago, this October. Um, so, you know, I've lost friends, I've lost my godmother, I lost her 25 years ago. Um, you know, this loss has been sort of a staple for me. It's been there, um throughout my whole journey of life i um when i said i lost my father that was my adopted father the man that raised me um did everything for me um but i also lost my adopted parents so my uh, birth parents biological parents um i lost them also now 20 one years ago uh, in December will be 21 years ago for my birth mother and uh, for my birth father will be about 18 years ago so you know I am no stranger to loss I've been dealing with losing family members from a child um, into my into adulthood and through my whole journey of adulthood to this point and I've always sort of um, uh, dealt with the loss of pregnancies. Those were deaths all on their own. I mean, I've had seven, I've had six miscarriages and I have had one um, newborn die. Um, my baby girl, Manisha, um, she would be turning 25 next month so you know I am no stranger to loss um, it has been a part of my journey I mean I know others have been fortunate to not have had to deal with as many um, as I have through the years but 
One thing is for certain, the older you get, the more that is likely that you'll be dealing with the loss of siblings, friends, um, parents, aunts, uncles. Um, you know, for me, that all of that loss started um, much, much, much earlier for me in my life. Um, but it was always a case of I've always been the type of person to um, view pain and um, any situation that I'm going through as I can't just turn away from it or pretend like it's not there. I'm always a firm believer that you have to go through it. You can't go around it because going around it is it's going to be waiting for you down the road is somewhere. So, you know, I've always been that person to say, okay, I've got to go through. I can't go around. Um, so that's how I've always dealt with, um, with the loss as it's happened. Um, what I've never dealt with is loss on the scale that, um, that it has been for the last um, couple of years. Um, lost um, my adopted mother um, at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so that would have been in early 2020. She passed away in April, um, was buried in May of 2020. That situation was, um, hard. I mean, she had a stroke, um, in the two years prior to that. So I was sort of always on that, um, from that point on was on that track because she was older and she had only lived a full life that, you know, I was on that, that road knowing that, okay, this stroke, they prepared me, you know, she lost her, um, her speech. She wasn't able to walk anymore. She was on a feeding tube. So they prepared me to say, you know, she's not going to last long, unfortunately, because of her age and because of what the stroke has done. She's not going to last long. So I cried every time I had to go see my mom and leave my mom. I had prepared, I had gone to the funeral home, prepared that whole situation. I mean, I had already in my mind prepared for her passing. And it was like, I knew that even when it happened, I was still going to go through that sense of mourning because I was still able to go see her. She was still lifting up her hand to hold mine. So she was still there. Um, so while I was mourning the loss of her, the loss of hearing her voice, the loss of going places with her and whatnot, while I was doing that, I knew that, um, I knew that, um, even when it finally came that I was still, you know, still going to go through, um, uh, feeling that sorrow of her death so it was almost like it was drawn out and I don't know if that was good or if that was bad because you know when you're feeling sorrow for so long repeatedly what does that really do to you right but nevertheless they thought she was gonna be gone in a couple months and she, two years later there she was <laughs> she was still here still holding on just goes to tell you that only God ever ever knows. We as men, we know nothing. Um, only God knows um, what's coming down, um, coming down the road. So I went ahead and as you've seen on my um, other videos, I went ahead and I did my knee surgery. Um, I was trying to hold it out because I didn't for two years not knowing. And um, I went ahead, I got the appointment, I went ahead and did my knee surgery. I went and I saw her um, in January of 2020, just before I went in for my surgery and I said to her, kissed her and I said, you know, mom, you know, I'm not gonna, um, be able to come and visit you because I'm going to be healing from the surgery. But as soon as I can drive, I'll be back and I'll be calling the nurses to check up on you. 
So, um, uh, by March, I was about eight weeks post, uh, um, just started driving short distances in her nursing home. It's like a bit of a distance from me. But, you know, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm almost there. I, I, I'm going to call them and, and, you know, just make sure that we're good to go. Because by now, this corona thing was out there. And I was like, okay, even if um, I'm feeling a bit of pain, I'm going to have to just, like, do it. I'm just going to have to do the drive, get there. Um, so... I called and told, uh, you know, I'm going to come, I'm going to come and visit her. And they said, no, the home is on lockdown. No one can come in and out. Um, and then I was just heartbroken. I was just heartbroken. But, you know, she, they told me, reassured me, she's good. She's uh, had her, um, her test and she's negative. Um, and she's doing very well. She's, uh, you know, she's hanging in. Only to get the call um, the next month. Uh, well, not the next month. It was like a couple weeks later after not being able to get a hold of the nursing home for a while. Um, because their staff all came down with it. They had minimal staff. Nobody was there answering the phone. So it was torture. It was a literal torture for those couple weeks um and then i got the call and i'll never forget the morning the morning that i got the call it was probably like three in the morning i had not gone to sleep i had a dream about her the night before um and it was like she was telling me something and i to this day i try to remember the dream but I can't remember the actual dream. And then that night, I just could not fall asleep. I stayed awake playing music, playing music. And at three o'clock in the morning, I saw the nursing home calling my phone and I just knew. And they told me, they said, um, unfortunately her breathing uh, is labored. Um, none of the treatments that we're giving her is working. She's not gonna make it through the night. She's not gonna make it till morning what they said so I said is there any way I can come um like do you, can you make an allowance for this situation so that I could just come be with her they said no you can't so um I said okay and then of course my eyes were wide open again still for the rest of the night never closing my eyes that night and by 6 30 they called again and they said, I'm just going to tell you her was gone. So some might say, well, you know, at least you had prepared your mind, you know, you know, you expected her to go and whatever. I could probably even get past, you know, um, the fact that Corona now came into my mom even when a stroke didn't take her out. I rarely get past all of that. But what I think tortured my mind and probably still does is that I didn't get to see her. That um, because of the timing of everything, I just, like, I finally went in to do the knee surgery because I had waited and it's like, you know, I'm like, I'm suffering. I'm just gonna do this, you know. Mom's been hanging in for the last two years. She's she's the she will hang in for me to just get my surgery and recover and see her again. And Corona came and took that away from me. So hearing after on the news about how the state of the nursing homes, what the residents suffered, I my mind is tortured with how. My mother must have suffered and died in a bed where she couldn't speak, where she couldn't call for help, where just that. So I say all of that to say that grieving, how this grief process for me now 
life is so different because of the circumstances surrounding it. So somebody might say to you, you know, how do you deal with loss? There is no blanket answer for that because loss can have so many different things attached to it, so many different feelings attached to it. It could be a loss that, you know, is you're blindsided, like, like how my father's was in a sense, right? And it's like, what? How's this possible? You know, how's this person gone? Like, I don't ask myself, you know, how, how, how's it possible? How's it possible that my mom gone? I don't even ask it. I've never since she's been gone asked that question. Um, because that is not a part of my feeling of loss. Because I wasn't blindsided by her going. Because I had positioned myself and conditioned myself to expect that loss for two years. But what took me was how she went. The circumstances surrounding. The fact that she laid there and died alone after living her entire life. You know, and I know she's not the first and the last person that would probably die alone. But the fact is I was here and I was here and she was just right there. And it's not like I had to take a plane to get to her, you know, so that is part of the circumstance of that loss. And that's what makes, you know, the question of how you deal with loss difficult in every situation. And you have to take every situation as it is. Then, um, to sort of add to that loss, that feeling of being robbed, right? Because that's what I feel like. I was robbed of my moments with my mother. You know, those final moments, those last moments. I feel like I was robbed of that. Then you come around to, you know, laying her to rest. You know, that celebration of life, that those that those times that you use to sort of, you know, band together, hear the stories of people that loved her and, you know, get together and do all of that and send her off in style. Corona even robbed me of that. Because now the funeral home says only 10 people, only 10 people. So I have to lay this woman to rest um, without the send-off that she so deserved. After all her years on this earth, she so deserved it. So then there's that sadness because that funeral to me wasn't the kind of closure that you normally would get when you're laying someone to rest. So now that loss and that sorrow, it's sort of different. It's different from any that I've gone through. And that's why I, you know, that's why I started this off by, you know, explaining all the loss that I've been through throughout my life's journey. You know, I'm no stranger to it, but it's so 